Welcome to another video on MATLAB and in this video we will learn how to access matrix entries and matrix elements. Here's the content in detail. So first we talk about accessing single matrix entries, single numbers. Then we talk about how to access rows and columns. And finally, we learn how to define submatrices. Okay, so if we implement matrices, then we use square brackets as it's shown in the example here. If you want to access entries in matrices, then we use round brackets. Here is an example. So we consider this three by three matrix and we are interested in this matrix entry, the six. So how do we do this? We write A and then we use the round brackets and we have two indices. The first index is a two. That's because we are interested in the second row and the second index is a one because we access the first column. So in MATLAB, it's similar as in mathematics. The first index always corresponds to the row and the second index always corresponds to the column. Now, if we know this, we know maybe everything to access matrices. The rest is just modification. Okay, let's go a step further. How can we access rows and columns? That's simple because we again use round brackets. Here is the example, it's still the same matrix and maybe we're interested in the second row. How do we do this? Here is the answer, we write A with round brackets. We're interested in the second row, so that's why the first index is a two. And we're interested in all columns, that's why we place at the second position uh, just a column. A column stands for take all columns in this case. Okay, another example, we are now interested in the third row. How do we do this? Here is the answer. A round brackets. We are now interested in all rows. So that's why we put the column, the column into the first index. And we're interested in the third column. That's why we write here the three. Finally, how can we define submetrics that's part of matrices? Uh, we still use round brackets is the answer. So here's an example. We are interested in this lower part of the matrix. And here's how to implement it in MATLAB. We write A round brackets. And now we are interested in rows 2 and 3. So we write 2, 2, 3 here with a column. And we are interested in the first two columns. So we write in the second index, in the second part of the round bracket, one, two, two. That's from uh, row, uh, column one to column two. So here's the last example. We now want to define a submatrix which uh, consists of two separated parts. Yeah, so you see uh, the parts are not connected. And in this case, we use round brackets and combine them with square brackets. So here is the MATLAB command. We are interested in row two and three. So we can write in the first index two to three as before. And now we want columns one and three. If we would write one column three, so from one to three, we also would take the column two. And that's what we not want. So that's why we define a vector uh, and that's because we use this square brackets in the second index. Yeah, we define here a vector which contains the indices which we want to take. So in this case, one and three for the first and third column. 